we can express concentration qualitatively or quantitatively. When we talk about concentration in a qualitative sense, we just point to a solution and say, oh, well, that's concentrated relative to this other one, or it's dilute relative to this other one. There isn't a lot of precision there because we don't have any numbers that give us information about the concentration. However, there are lots of quantitative measures of concentration. We've met mass percentage in doing gravimetric analyses. That mass percentage is the same here. The mass of a given component divided by the total mass of the solution multiplied by 100. Parts per million, parts per billion, and parts per trillion are very similar to mass percentage, except instead of multiplying by 100, as you do for mass percentage, you multiply by a million, or a billion, or a trillion. So all of these quantitative measures of expressing concentration, it's all one equation. It's just, what do I multiply by at the end to express my concentration in mass percent, or parts per million, billion, trillion, and so on. Piece of trivia, it turns out that one part per million is approximately equal to one milligram of that stuff per liter of solution. If we have calcium ions in a solution that are present in, let's say, three parts per million, that means that there are about three milligrams for every liter of solution. Other quantitative ways to express concentration are the mole fraction, which we symbolize by capital X. It's simply moles of a given component divided by the total moles of everything that is in that mixture. We've also met molarity already. Similar to molarity in some sense, but not the same, is molality, symbolized by little m. Molarity is moles of solute per liter of solution. Molality is moles of solute per kilogram of solvent. Unlike molarity, molality doesn't change with temperature, and that's because mass remains constant with changing temperature. If you look at the molarity equation, you can see that in the denominator we have liters of solution, whereas molality we have kilograms of solvent. When you heat a solution, its volume, that is the number of liters, changes slightly. When you heat a solution, the mass doesn't change. Volume changes slightly with temperature, and so we have to be a little careful with molarity because it can change a bit if the temperature changes. If we want to convert between molarity and molality. If we know one of them and we want to calculate the other, we need the solution's density. And as we can see, for molarity and molality, the numerators are the same, moles of solute, but for molarity we have liters, which is volume, and in molality we have kilograms, which is mass. And what concept connects mass and volume but density? Let's try a problem. A 5.5 gram sample of well water contains 0.75 micrograms of lead ions. In parts per million, find the concentration of lead ions. Parts per million is mass of the component we're interested in divided by the total mass. Well, the mass of the component that we're interested in is the mass of the lead ions. So that's going to be 0.75 micrograms or 0.75 times 10 to the sixth grams because I can simply take that micro prefix, throw it out, and put the power of 10, that is 10 to the negative sixth, in its place. The mass of the solution is 5.5 grams. That's given. We multiply by 10 to the sixth to put it in parts per million, and there's your answer, 0 0.14 parts per million. Now I've put a little note here, as of, I believe, 2016, the federal limit for lead in drinking water is 15 parts per billion. What would change in this calculation up here if we were to calculate parts per billion? And isn't it true, if you look in the equation, 
parts per billion right here. The only thing that would change would be over here on the far right, instead of 10 to the 6th, it would be 10 to the 9th, which means in this well water, 140 parts per billion. Three more powers of 10. I don't recommend drinking this well water. Let's try one more. If a commercial bleach is 4.35% sodium hypochlorite by mass, calculate the bleach's mole fraction and molality of the sodium hypochlorite. Here's one thing that I say in my classes in an effort to encourage my students to get their hands dirty and try some things, and here it is. When you don't know what to do, do something. It sounds crazy. Sometimes you're going to read a problem and you're not going to know what it is to do. So you need to start. You need to do something. And hopefully that will lead you into where you need to go. So let's assume that for this problem we don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. We're not told how much bleach we have. I'm going to just pick a number, 100 grams of bleach. If that's the case, well, now the problem has told me what the percentage of sodium hypochlorite is, and the rest is water. Okay, well, we've gotten somewhere. Now, let's convert those grams into moles. I mean, after all, we are asked to calculate mole fraction, so I think moles of things would be useful information to have. Using the periodic table, we can calculate the molar mass of sodium hypochlorite to be 74.5 grams, and that tells us the moles of sodium hypochlorite that we have. The molar mass of water is, of course, 18, so we can calculate the moles of water. Okay, well, the mole fraction of sodium hypochlorite is the moles of sodium hypochlorite divided by the total. So that's what we've done here moles of sodium hypochlorite divided by total, that is, moles of sodium hypochlorite plus moles of water. And that gives us that number. The mole fraction is essentially a percentage, but we never multiply by 100. It's always a decimal less than 1, and it never has any unit. We're also asked in the problem to find molality. And molality, by definition, is moles of solute divided by kilograms of solvent. We know the number of moles of solute, and right up here we had 95.65 grams, so that is, of course, 0 0.09565 kilograms. And there's the molality. We put a little m with molarity, of course, we'd put a big M with molality, it's a little m. Let's review more ways to quantify concentration. While mass percentage and molarity will be the most common ways you will quantify solution concentration, there are many others that I believe are worth knowing. Parts per million, parts per billion, parts per trillion. In particular, if you're an AP Chemistry student, you will have to have some working knowledge of mole fraction, so that's why there's a double star by that, and then at the bottom, molality. So, AP Chemistry students at this time are required to be able to work with mass percentage, molarity, and mole fraction, but then there are many others that sometimes come in handy.